The end of the world is coming, haven't you heard? Worry not though, I've found a solution. Simply learn to stop worrying and love the bomb. Were you hoping for a solution a little less strange, love? Well, too bad. With all these SCPs roaming around, the foundation is bound to slip up and drop 100 nukes on containment zones or allow one to grow too large to control. Breathe deep now because you might not get a chance later. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host Keegan Hughes and today we're taking a look at some K-class scenarios, counting down the top 5 scary SCPs that can trigger the apocalypse. Before we get started, we've got an exciting message from this video's sponsor, Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast. You hurt me right, there's an Iron Maiden dark fantasy RPG available right now on mobile. Collect, power up, and evolve over 400 wicked champions across many classes, create the most insane fighting team of warriors, gunners, and more, and battle your way through a variety of worlds, dungeons, and arenas. Through hundreds of levels, gain some infamy, become a legend, visit massive worlds, slay huge bosses, rebuild Eddie's shattered souls, squash an ancient evil, and save the universe as we know it. Plus, on top of the story mode, there's PvP arenas and guilds to test your mettle. Gather your forces and climb the leaderboards as you best the best of the best, or team up with other players online to find untold strength in numbers. Of course, all of this is set to the classic tunes of Iron Maiden. What are you waiting for? Run to the hills and take charge of your destiny. If you download Legacy of the Beast now, you'll receive the first of seven deadly gifts, including an epic champion. Wicked. Let's start the countdown. Kicking us off at number 5, we have SCP-736. Someone or something is toying with the planets and it's not looking too good for Earth. Imagine now the craziest trick shot ever attempted. What'd you come up with? Basketballs thrown from skyscrapers? Boomerangs chipping golf balls knocking over dominoes? How about this? The Saturnian moon Iapetus knocking Titan off its orbit, thus careening through space for hundreds of years until it collides with Earth. Sounds wicked, sure, but consider the implications of an impact like that would have on our dear sweet green planet. I don't think we'd be around to appreciate the precision of the shot. 736 is an anomaly that seems to affect one of the moons orbiting Saturn. The orbit will often be altered by measures of eccentricity, orbital period, or both. Once the shot is lined up, it seems to return to the regularly documented state. It's almost as if the thing in control is taking the moon, calculating the trajectory, and then reconsidering based on the endpoint. Whatever it is, it would probably be pretty good at pool, or billiards, or snooker, or whatever you want to call it. How do we know that this is being directed by an intelligent entity? Well, a while ago the foundation picked up a transmission from the surface of Iapetus. The analysis of this signal is inconclusive, but it does provide evidence of a sapient, technologically advanced presence on the surface of the moon. Unfortunately, communication attempts have been unreciprocated. It's focused. No distractions from its massive Rube Goldbergian ricochet. Based on models created after anomalous movement from the moon, foundation scientists have concluded that we'll be seeing the blunt end of Titan somewhere within the X 150 to 300 years. At first, the orbits of Saturnian moons were changed by very little by the propulsion of Iapetus through space, but the ever meticulous scientist, the unknown being, has really refined its shot. Between 2007 and 2011, it fine tuned the moon launch from colliding with Saturn and doing nothing to altering the orbit of Titan such that it would swing by Earth within 800,000 kilometers. That's close, and it's only getting closer. Practice makes perfect after all. If that touches down, we're definitely going the way of the dinosaurs. Coming in at number 4, SCP-3199. These big chicken chimp hybrid looking things are dangerous. Standing tall at around 3 meters, weighing in at 780 kilograms, they will hunt anything that comes close enough to be a food source. And with an average foot speed of 25 kilometers per hour, there's a good chance that you are close enough to be a food source. 3199 might look funny, but they're no joke, Pucket. If you've ever been hunted by one, you'll have your internal organs liquefied and your bones broken down too. Then your lovely goopy cadaver will be transported to the younger instances and be used for nourishment. Hopefully you like being baby food. The young are a big deal too, not just because they're born weighing 360 kilos and because their progenitors scream at the top of their lungs while laying eggs either. It's because they're able to reproduce so fast and require so little in terms of resources to get moving. Makes us humans look absolutely fragile by comparison. 
get this, 3199 instances all carry one egg in their stomach pretty much at all times. It doesn't need to be fertilized, it doesn't need to grow to a certain size, it just needs to exist for the species to propagate. If they had the wherewithal, which they probably do, these pale poultry people could cause a population explosion. They have a stupid short incubation period and are nigh indestructible. In fact, they can resist extreme blunt force trauma, extensive pressure exceeding 180,000 psi, high precision blades, and long term acid exposure. Can you think of any other egg that might survive under those conditions? Oh boy. If they're not taken care of carefully with their populations constantly controlled, 3199 could take over the world in a heartbeat, turning all those other creatures into a slurry faster than you can say, look at all those chickens. Coming in at number 3, we've got SCP-1514. A fancy nuclear deterrent system with a very real possibility of going rogue. Great. Why did we make this again? There are two main components to this SCP, 1514-1 and 1514-2. One is a life support system of sorts, utilizing an unidentified dark red liquid to keep what appears to be a fetus alive. No tampering with this under threat of immediate and painful death. Pleasant. 1514-2 is a series of satellites orbiting around the Earth, seemingly powered by an alternative anomalous source. The solar panels are just for show, folks. These satellites are supposed to be used for disabling intercontinental ballistic missiles, but are in all likelihood going to be used to raid death and destruction upon the surface of the Earth. See. 1514-A generates an anomalous radio transmission once every hour, broadcasting to the nearest 1514-2 instance. There is no known way to deter or disrupt this transmission. If, for some horrible, terrible reason, the signal is not received for a period lasting longer than 36 hours, a failsafe known as the coronet contingency will be implemented. This involves the immediate and autonomous firing upon of all preset targets by all 1514-2 instances, and in classic American military fashion, that has turned out to be much more extensive than intended, and as such deemed a probable XK class end of the world scenario. So why are these signals so uninterruptible? Why isn't there a failsafe failsafe? Well, some crackshot scientists decided they needed to make the most direct, undeterrable signal possible, and they thought that replicating the telepathic link between a mother and her unborn baby was the way to do it. And it worked! But also, as mothers tend to do, it will freak out and wreck everything if the baby is considered to be in danger. Essentially, they've created a dead man's switch to global destruction and a non-corporeal mother has been placed into many weapon carrying satellites. And nobody thought for one moment and thought, maybe this is a bad idea. Ha! Huh. Coming in at number 2, SCP-2747. Stay with me on this one, it's a little odd. 2747 is a phenomenon where people start discussing non-existent works of fiction. Like, little facts and pieces of these stories start showing up in articles, posts, comments, you know the deal, as if they were real. So you might stumble across a TV tropes entry that covers a fourth wall break from a movie that no one's seen. Or maybe a reference to a plot point in a review of another piece of media. Whatever it might be, this is strange because the story never existed. Or did it? Some theorize that these stories were indeed real at some point, but have since been destroyed, erased from existence. However, it's an imperfect erasure, one that leaves behind little bits that make up the outline of the hole that the story left. Even though you can't see the story, you can see there used to be a story. This is even easier to detect in pieces of metafiction or stories within stories. However, thanks to the nature of 2747, these missing nested stories will eventually erase the parent story, and then that one's parent story, and so on. It seems that there's an anti-narrative involved, with a set of tropes or symbols which when put together will make a story erase itself. This is all well and good until you realize the implications of something like this in the Foundation's database. Agents put together a procedure called Lucid Chalice that was meant to lay bare the contents of the anti-narrative in order to combat its spread. Well, the results aren't there anymore. They've disappeared. They've been erased. If we follow the breadcrumbs, it becomes clear that the Foundation is indeed a meta-narrative in itself, stories within stories connected to stories. And if a piece is missing, then the parrot narrative is next. And after that, maybe the whole Foundation universe disappears. Then the wiki itself. And then the world containing the wiki. Our world. Oh. Right now, the Foundation is constantly generating stories to fill gaps and analyze the nature of an anti-narrative. Fingers crossed they can keep enough in place to prevent the narrative disintegration of everything. 
And finally at number one, we've got SCP-3007. This details a hallucinogenic phenomenon with no apparent pattern of spread. Death seems to be the only effective method in preventing or discontinuing the effects. About four times a day, people affected by the hallucinations will experience 50 to 80 minute periods where they claim to be transported to an unearthly location. However, their physical bodies continue to exist in the real world, with hearing and touch still connected to our plane. Sight, smell, and taste will be tied to the hallucination, which has led to some unfortunate deaths. The place has been described as a city of sorts, with many obvious differences from our world. Buildings seem to be largely pillar shaped and made of metal. Planes with six wings are crashed all over the place. Long, high bridges span across the skyline. Plus, there's mutilated corpses everywhere. In fact, some people have likened the appearance of the city to be something that has been played with, destroyed by a giant child of sorts. It wasn't a natural disaster that ended this civilization. In order to further understand the lost society, the foundation enlisted an artist who was experiencing these very same hallucinations. He was to travel through the city while under foundation surveillance and report on what he saw. Then, upon return, he was to recreate a specific set of paintings detailing the history of the people. These tapestries appear to detail the fall of a society thanks to the influence of a red essence. At one point, the society was prosperous, benefiting greatly from advanced design and artistic temperaments. A benevolent deity ruled over them, typified by the color blue, only to realize that the influence of red essence was corrupting their people. The deity found a way to composite their story into art as to avoid the spreading of the info hazardous effects of the red haze. With the fall of their society, this should have been the end of it. No way for the red to travel further. However, it seems that the red essence found a way to plant hallucinations into the minds of people on Earth, allowing them to travel into the destroyed world and find out what happened for themselves. Then, they bring the red back with them. The final painting, hidden away behind security clearances, shows the red essence heading for a planet that looks suspiciously like Earth. Well, if something's gonna end the planet, I'm glad there's a chance it'll be anomalous. How embarrassing would it be if we just destroyed ourselves? Might as well put the blame on something else, right? What'd you think of the list? Any K-class entries you think should have made the cut? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more destructive ones from the top five dumbest horror movie plots that made no sense, part three. Zach Davis says, call me crazy, but I think the gorilla heart came from a gorilla. Oh, you're so clever. Tell me, where do you find a healthy gorilla ready to undergo surgery in Mexico? They're not exactly growing on trees. Morgan Luna says, I actually have a side gig working in a dead and breakfast. It's a horror themed bed and breakfast in Wisconsin. Google it if you're interested. Sounds like a blast and a half, but I've gotta warn you, if an RV full of nondescript wedding goers show up, just take the day off. Michelle Weir says, 666th like. Sweet. That's a good number. Hold it close. Goopin of Gloopus asks, Where is Sharknado? I crave aquatic weather-based destruction. Don't worry, Goopin. Sharknado's been with us all along, in our hearts. And DK Domo says, Take a long walk off a short pier. Did I hear Keegan right? Did he just tell us to jump? Well, I said I was gonna take that long walk, but hey, if you wanna join me, go right ahead. Peer pressure. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks again to Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check it out, link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.